I'm sorry, I'm trying to be better about my posture. <sighs> Pardon me. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to have a little chat about what I've been working on writing-wise lately, and it turns out that I'm writing a rom-com. <laughs> how did I come to this decision, <laughs> you might wonder. So I've had these two characters that have been kind of rolling around and slowly forming in my head for oh, a few years now, but I couldn't figure out the right plot to use them for or what would best suit them. But one day a couple weeks ago, I like lightning struck me. Like I just woke up one morning. I'd, I'd been thinking about them the night before, so it, it wasn't entirely out of the blue. But the next day I just woke up and it was like, Hah! I need to write a rom-com. <laughs> Like, I had the plot, I had the the finer points of their dynamic, just like, puh. So I grabbed my laptop and I started making notes and just jotting things down. And I had like half a page, a page worth of stuff. And then I just stopped and I'm like, you know, when was the last time I actually watched a rom-com? like that I hadn't seen before. When was the last time that happened? And so I went on a small binge and I watched different films on Netflix and Prime just, just to get the, the inspirational juices flowing. I wasn't necessarily looking for anything good. I just wanted to sort of tap into that mindset a little bit because I, like, I, I enjoy a good rom-com, but I don't often find myself going out of my way to find them. So at this point, I watched four rom-coms, no, five actually, excuse me, that I had never seen before, and they were interesting. <laughs> I think it was just because I, I started out with one that I really ended up liking, and the others just kind of tumbled down the stairs after it. So the first one that I watched was Set It Up, which is on Netflix. I had heard it was really good and I had friends recommend it to me. So that was like the first one that I went to and I actually ended up really liking it. Yeah, it was, it was really cute. It's not perfect. I do have a couple of issues with it, but it's not that deep. It's not supposed to be that deep. Um, it, it's just a cute way to spend an hour and a half. I thought the writing was really snappy, and I just loved the the dynamic of the characters. Yeah, I mean, it was just enjoyable. You can't really ask for much more, and I loved Zoe Dutch's character in that film. I thought she was super cute. And you know, the fact that she wants to be a writer and her roommate has to come in and give her a pep talk about her first draft, that, that hit a place. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a sucker for writer characters because I am one. So after that, I switched over primarily to, huh, switched over to Prime. First one that I watched there is called One Small Hitch, which is an indie film from 2012, I believe, and it looks it. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it it feels like it's of its time period. So the premise is that these two sort of childhood friends are going back home for a wedding and they find out that one of their fathers is dying of cancer. <laughs> Um, and so <laughs> you say it out loud and it's, it just sounds bonkers, but when it's in a movie, it's like, oh yeah, of course, like proceed. They find out that one of their fathers is dying of cancer, so they fake an engagement to make him happy in his last days. It's, it's more sentimental than I'm making it out to be. It was, it was cute. I, I enjoyed it. The pacing at the end kind of bothered me a little bit. Like, they really rushed the ending. And 
it got a little tropey in places, but I will forgive it that because it's a rom-com and they're kind of meant to be tropey. So not the best, but definitely not a complete waste of my time. And the main actors that they cast were really cute, and I mean this in the best way possible. They weren't like Hollywood beauty you know, glamorous people. They just looked like people, and I really enjoyed that. Like, they they were cute. I wanted to squish their cheeks. Then, <laughs> then things got weird. I found a movie called The Reality of Love, which, uh, which said it starred Bradley Cooper. What I didn't know was that it was a made-for-TV movie for ABC Family from 2003 <laughs> starring Bradley Cooper. It was a trip <laughs> because the whole thing is kind of parodied, not even kind of, like they are directly parodying The Bachelor. And also it's so strange to see Bradley Cooper not being treated as the hottest guy in the room because the whole, the whole concept is that Bradley Cooper is like the agent of his best friend who is also an actor and they're doing this whole reality show where these women come on to get chosen to marry him so ev all of the focus is on you know this actor guy while bradley cooper is just standing right here as you can expect one of the girls who gets on the show for him ends up falling for Bradley Cooper, and it's a whole thing, and Nicole Oliver is in it, like, as a real person, <laughs> and that threw me off, but yeah, it was, it was strange. No, it wasn't, it wasn't bad, it was, like, again, just so a product of its time. The cheese, man, <laughs> the cheese was sliceable, although I will say, the ending, was better than I thought it was going to be because actor dude finds out that Bradley Cooper and the girl um, have been seeing each other behind his back and he gets all mad and huffs off but then when the finale of the show comes around and Charlie the girl is the last one standing he says will will you marry my friend Todd instead of will you marry me and and Bradley Cooper is watching and he's like, what? <laughs> and that was cool. That was a cool moment. I did. I honestly didn't see it coming because the whole time they, they were talking about, oh, the, you know, you don't actually have to marry the girl, you know, you'll be engaged for a couple weeks and, and then it won't matter anymore. You can break up. Uh, so it, it, it didn't seem like that big of a deal if he did propose to her, but he ends up being the bigger man and confesses to the world like, hey, she's actually in love with this guy and I am letting them be together. And that was, that was a cool moment. So I watched that. Then, then, <laughs> then I watched Non-Transferable, which is a film done by, I can't remember his name, Brendan Bradley, thank you. It's made by Brendan Bradley and it stars him and Ashley Clements from Lizzie Bennet Diaries that I was scrolling through Prime and I was like, oh yeah, there's that film that Ashley Clements was talking about, I should watch that. First of all, turns out that there's like three other Lizzie Bennet Diaries cast members in that film, just as like bit parts. So that was really cool to see. Secondly, oh, how do, how do I, how do I explain this concisely? I liked elements of the film. I think it was definitely made for a very specific audience, meaning the kind of audience that is like on the internet 23-7 and is very familiar with the kind of people who make they're living on the internet. So take that as you will. As with a typical rom-com, I think at some points it moves a little too fast, but the characters were cute so I could forgive it. But at some point I just noticed that the writing kind of got really cyclical. Like the characters were kind of just saying the same crap 
over and over again, hoping it would like really stick this time, and it wasn't. On the plus side, though, they actually do go to Europe and film on vacation, which is very rare for uh, for an indie film of that caliber. So I applaud them for getting that done because it, it definitely played in their favor. I don't know, I think my problems were, were just with the script and, and how the characters didn't seem as developed as maybe they were going for? I don't know. Like, I, I didn't dislike it. I just, it didn't, it didn't hit me like I was hoping it would. And then, just last night, I ended up watching a film called Road Less Traveled. <sighs> how, how do I, how do I explain this film? First of all, the basic concept is that a country singer is uh, coming home to her small town, A, for her bachelorette party, because she's getting married, and B, to ask her grandmother for her mother's wedding dress. And shenanigans and old flames ensue. How, uh, hmm, I don't think this film was for me. I'll say that as a blanket statement. I don't think this film was for me. So take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt. I, I don't know, I just, I didn't feel like the romance element of it really did everything that it was supposed to do. That's just me. I constantly felt like they were focusing on the stuff that was less interesting. Because, like, the characters would just have throwaway lines, and I would, like, latch on to something that they said and think that that was going to be, a like, a major plot point, and then it would like never get brought up again and i'm like no 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 wait wait what happened what happened with that thing i thought that was gonna come back like there's a point where the girl the main girl is talking with her ex-boyfriend her old flame and she mentions how they used to write songs together and the whole time her fiance has been hounding her because he also works with her he's been hounding her about when she's gonna have the new song done and and i'm over here like wh what were, were we supposed to know that at one point was that important information like i i i want to hear more about that personally and the, her the little brother character he apparently like lived in the city like atlanta or something at one point and then came back home to help with the farm and he's talking about like being in an office with standing desks and like talking about very like tech savvy terms and i'm just like what what did you do in atlanta like what what vocation were you in before you came back to the farm and it it never it never comes back up again and i almost missed it because he's giving this whole big speech that that's another thing that that bothers me the some of the dialogue in this film i can't tell if it's the acting or if it's genuinely the script but some of the dialogue just feels like a regular person would never say that like or at least say it in that way i don't know the first 20 minutes or so i was like what is wrong with this dialogue it sounds so weird i will give them credit where credit is due I did not see the end coming because, you know, when you have these like, you know, will she stay with her guy from the city or will she return to her first love from the country? T typically it always ends with the guy from the country. A am I wrong in that? I feel like that he's usually the one that you're rooting for. But in the end of this film, she ends up going back to her original fiance and she gets closure with her old flame and i'm like okay like i i didn't see this coming i didn't think i was supposed to be rooting for this guy but points for originality i guess although it it took them a hot minute to make that clear i was still rooting for the country guy if i'm honest anyway this this turned into a review video and i really didn't mean for it to but i watched a lot of weird rom-coms and i just had to tell you 
So, so the other weird part about me writing this is that I actually wrote an outline, <laughs> which I almost never do. I'm a pretty solid planter, and like I, I will usually make a few notes to myself, but I'll never like I, I cannot remember the last time I wrote like a proper outline that wasn't for like a school project or something. But for some reason with this story, I just felt like I needed to to know what was going on every step of the way. Because, you know, movies, though they can seem daunting at first glance, are actually pretty darn concise. You gotta like set up the world real fast. You gotta introduce us to the characters real fast. You gotta get us to the plot real fast. And I'm just like, okay, I need I need to know what's going on. I need to know the characters. I need to know where they are, where they're going. I like the concept of outlines, but I don't feel like I need to use them a lot of the time. Not not to brag or anything, but I feel like I have a, a pretty good like memory storage system up in here um and i i can usually work things out pretty well just in my head but but there was something about about this story you know stories will will typically tell you how they need to be written and some are different than others so this was just one where i needed an outline and i just remembered like okay i need i need to put all this to paper, like, let's, let's get this over with. And I remember like kind of stepping back and looking at it. I'm like, wait, did I just write an outline? <laughs> Is that what just happened here? My uncandid camera. I don't want to give away too much about the story itself because I'm paranoid, but I will say that it involves a character who is a celebrity. I think, I think it's, it's a little more earnest than a lot of rom-coms I've seen lately. It's a bit more upfront. Here's something that I've noticed in watching all of these films that I'm really trying to avoid in my script is that somewhere along the line, and it's usually like within the first half, one of the characters gets drunk. And in doing so, that kind of sets something in motion. And I, at a point, I just got tired of that. Why do they have to be drunk to make things like this happen? Where is that a law? So I'm trying to avoid that. I say trying like it's, you know, a essential part of a rom-com. It's not. It's just a really common trope that I don't think a lot of people really notice. I think that people fall back on it because, you know, when when people are drunk, they, you know, their inhibitions are kind of thrown to the window and they can say things that they wouldn't otherwise say because they have the confidence to do so. You know, you come back when they're sober and they're like, wait, oh my god, I didn't mean to say that at all. But at, at a point, you're just like, can can we just not? Is there some other way to get these people to open up like Jesus. Really this video has no ulterior motive. I just wanted to tell you about what I've been working on and the weird research process. If you're working on something right now, I'd love to hear about it if you want to leave me a comment. Like, don't feel pressured to do it by any means. I feel weird asking for comments. It's not like I'm begging for compliments or anything. Like, I, I just genuinely want to know what you're working on if you want to tell me. Okay, I think I've said everything I came to say, so, ah. Hmm. Always oh, purring. Hmm. <laughs>